Hey, I'm Zeta Sage Plays. Welcome back to San Bernardino Zoo and welcome to the Treetop Trail. Before we start building that though, I just wanted to show you how well our Jaguar are getting on. We have two cute little cubs now. They're almost fully grown actually. Really enjoying watching them walk around in the Jaguar dome that we built. Uh, but anyway, that is not what we're doing today. Today, we're gonna be building a treetop trail for Orangutan and Siamang. So we are gonna be getting the guests way up to tree level on an elevated path, and then doing everything that we can to get the Siamang and the Orangutan up there with them rather than standing about on the floor all the time. So the first thing we need to do in the habitat is build a barrier to keep the animals in. And the barrier that we're going to use for this particular habitat is a dry moat. So to keep orangutan and siamang in, we're going to need walls at least three meters high, made of something like the concrete we're using here that's completely smooth that they can't climb. And as long as we've got three, three and a half meters from the bottom of the moat to the top, they're not going to be able to climb out. Um, it takes up a bit of space, but if you've got the room, and we've got a lot of room left in San Bernardino Zoo, it's probably the best option to keep them in. Uh, and it's gonna look really nice when it's finished. So we're gonna make a pretty simple moat here out of concrete, one of the grass panels, and then some of the sides of the islands that we built for the gibbons. We'll just edit this, get rid of the fences and the, the plants and stuff like that. We'll just get a really simple kind of mud wall in. And that's gonna make this sit really nicely in with the actual habitat. And what we're gonna do, once we've finished this one piece, we're gonna use this to create a moat all the way around the habitat. You can see the null barriers that I've put in already. That defines where the habitat's gonna be. Um, and we're not gonna use any in-game barriers to actually keep the animals in. I'm gonna briefly switch them over to uh, the logs just so that we can see where the edges of the habitat are which enables us to start putting in the dry moat. Now I should probably acknowledge at this point the numerous times that I have said on this channel that I will never build a habitat for orangutan until Frontier add a brachiation to them. So why am I building one for them now? Well, two reasons really. Firstly, now that we have Siamang and Gibbons in the game, it means we can build a mixed habitat where there's gonna be a hell of a lot more climbing going on, even if it is by the other animals rather than the orangs. And secondly, building it like this, a treetop trail, with the guests being at tree level, and then loads and loads of climbing opportunities and platforms, etc., for the animals. I'm hoping that when the orangs are on the floor, you're not really gonna notice them. You'll be looking at the Siamang, and when they are climbing, then you are gonna notice them, and you're gonna get a really good look at them, and the habitat should work nicely. That is the plan. We will see if that works or not in the end cinematics, but let's get back to actually building. So I've sunk the finished dry moat down into the ground. Now we're gonna dig down to the level of the concrete and then just flatten the terrain all the way around the habitat so that we get the moat in. And you can see it's got a really hard concrete edge on one side that they won't be able to climb up and then a much softer looking um, sort of mud rock side um, on the habitat side of things that's gonna look a lot more attractive for the guests and, and make the habitat look a lot better. Next up, we need to put the paths in. So we're gonna be about um, three meters up, I think, or two and a half meters up, something like that for the path. And we're just gonna draw in a nice natural looking curve that takes people on a fairly sort of meandering path through the habitat. Want it to feel quite adventurous. You won't be able to see the end when you first get into it, etc. cetera. Um, make it feel as immersive as possible. And then we will join this end of the path up to the guest path that's already there. This is just past the otters that we built last week, which is where this habitat is gonna sit. The other end of the path that we're gonna leave for the moment, because I don't actually know what's gonna happen on the other side yet, so I don't wanna build myself into a corner there. But this is what the guest view is gonna be like. Looks pretty nice already. Next up, we need to choose what path we're gonna use. What I wanna do for this habitat, something I don't do very often, which is use the in-game railings. Um, I've spent so many hours over the past couple of years building custom railings for winding paths and normally I've got a really specific look in mind. With this path I just want something quite rustic and natural looking so we're going to go through all the available options and see if any of them work or if any of them could be modified to work and I think the one of the natural paths um, which has just got these wooden posts with wire strung between them, this one here, I think we could do something with that. I like the path itself, it's quite neutral and then the railings themselves can easily be covered up. So we will do a lot of work on that later. Right now, we're gonna work on the keeper access. So the dry moat ends here in front of the keeper gate. Um, so we need to use this as where the keeper is gonna get in and out of the habitat. 
problem of course is if a human can walk in and out then <laughs> so can an ape so um, what we need to do is again design this so they couldn't get in or out so we're gonna have some more three meter high concrete walls and we'll put some hot wire on top of them as well just in case uh, they develop any enormous jumping powers um, and later on we'll do some more work on this to make it look a bit less like a uh, bunker or something like that but we just want to get the basics in right now uh, make sure that we can get it so it works and then I'm going to move all the null barriers out a little bit and change them into chain link just so that we have a secondary barrier behind the moat which is mainly to keep animals out stop animals from coming into the habitat really and then we're going to take a quick break for franchise masters today's tip is to do with staff buildings and time saving two things that you're going to be doing a lot of or needing a lot of when you're in franchise mode so we need staff buildings everywhere in the zoo in franchise mode always got to have a keeper hut staff room keep the staff happy now the last thing you want to be doing if you want a really detailed zoo uh, like this one is trying to come up with a new design for every area in the zoo perfectly themed to that area because it is going to take forever so what I do is build one generic looking really nice staff building that I'm happy with that doesn't have a particular theme just a modern kind of build and then you can put that all over the zoo and it doesn't matter which area of the zoo you put it in as long as it's not too close to where the guests are going to be which you wouldn't want for a staff building anyway it'll just sit in the background and look nice and unobtrusive so we're going to build a little modern build here um, we've got a keeper heart a research center and a staff room and if need be you can switch out the research center for mechanics or any of the other one box buildings if you need to and then we can just put this anywhere in the zoo that we need staff buildings and it will save us a huge amount of time so it's worth spending the time to make one nice looking fairly generic building because it'll save you an enormous amount of time throughout the rest of the zoo so this one basically just concrete and wood uh, put some windows on I'm not even gonna bother making the walls out of panels so I can recess the windows because this is always going to be in the background a few flowers a bit of an area for the staff to sit in and there we go nice little staff building something like that scattered all around your zoo will really help you out in franchise mode back to the build and it is time to get the climbing structures in so the way I'm gonna make this habitat work is by using the different climbing abilities of the two different animals to keep them separated into different levels of the build so there are lots of pieces in the game that the Siaman can climb on but the orangs can't because the Siaman are much smaller um, and that is what we're gonna be using so we're gonna build some custom climbing structures first of all for the orangs which are gonna go as close to the path as I can get them without the orangs being able to escape and these will be fairly sizable platforms the main thing that i need to avoid in this entire build for my own sanity when i look at it later is that the orangs are not going to be able to do that thing they do where they walk on all fours across like a vine <laughs> or a branch that's like a centimeter wide and somehow these giant apes uh walking across it on all fours it drives me mad when i see that and that is the main reason i've never built for them before since the habitat i built for them in my london zoo recreation which uh drove me insane <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to have these big climbing structures that you can see here that they'll be able to walk around on naturally we're going to have some fairly hefty logs that um join them that again they'd be able to walk along but we're not going to allow them access to anything that they should be brachiating on but they're not so you're not going to see them walking across little vines those will be reserved for the siamang that will actually use them properly so these trees here we're going to have some of the very thin climbing pieces attached to so that the Siaman can get up them and the orangs won't be able to get on them and anything um, that's going to look bad with an orang on it is going to be designed in such a way that an orang cannot get on it. So we've made a nice start on the orang climbing structures there. Before we move on to detailing and then the Siaman climbing, let's get the ground of the habitat sorted. So we're going to be using the little jungle that I created that we've been using all over the islands and modifying that so it fits perfectly into the space of this habitat and then adding in a load of extra vines and undergrowth i want this to be really lush and also from a practical standpoint the more um undergrowth 
the less you're going to notice the apes when they're on the floor, which is the whole point of the habitat. So we're also going to use this to cover up the edges of the habitat as well and just make it really lush. The whole point is that when the guests are up on this path, they basically have an amazing view 360 degrees wherever they're looking. I've set up climbing wires going all the way around the habitat so that the Sire Man can climb in a continuous loop around the habitat without ever getting down to the ground. It's starting to look really nice in here. It's time to build an impressive entrance to let people know what they're about to get into. The entrance to the treetop trail is going to feature a Balinese style arch based on a real one uh, that I saw a photo of. I think that'll fit in really nicely with the otters that people will have just walked past. And it's going to be a really impressive entrance to the trail without sort of blocking out the view. With it being an arch, you should be able to see the beginnings of the trail as you walk up to it, which will sort of entice people into it. So it's going to be based on two different colours, a sort of quite light natural stone and then orange. Um, similar to the otter build that we did, they seem to be some pretty popular colours for designs over in Bali. There's going to be some subtle angle changes in these pillars which will make it look really interesting. So the grey pillar will be sloping away from you as you walk towards it and the orange pillar will be sloping inwards towards the grey pillar which gives a really nice sort of organic kind of feel even though it's a very formal structure. And they'll be using the step piece from the tropical pack which has immediately become one of my favourite pieces to uh, bridge the gap between the two pillars and create the arch. And then later on, we'll put in one of the Indian arches from the base game and color that to suit. I think it looks really nice, especially with the orang sat on top of the um, archway there. We'll put some of the temple walls that we created for the otter habitat in because they go really nicely and just color those to suit. And then we're going to use some of the new plants to uh, make this look old and like it belongs to this treetop trail. Some fallen leaves. Um, and we'll also have a really nice sign as well. Um, I've been having serious issues with my editing program and at some point the sign footage disappeared. So apologies, you will see the sign in the end cinematics, but the build footage is sadly lost, I'm afraid. And again, I mentioned these in the last episode, but these basket ferns, <laughs> I absolutely love them. Going to be putting them everywhere. And then we'll finish up the forest floor with as many different types of plants as we can. I want this to be super dense, probably the jungliest place in the zoo if we get it right. Mainly we want to block out the view of the dry moat so that that's as um, unnoticeable as possible from the path. With it being a raised path, there's no way to completely hide the dry moat, but we'll do our best. And then we're going to do one of my favorite tricks for stuff like this in Planet Zoo, which is to use the tropical plant panels. If you sink these down into the ground, they look absolutely amazing as natural vegetation. You just need to make sure that you sink them enough so that you can't see the square edges. You can leave square edges like we have here, where you're going to eventually join it up with loads of other of these panels. But wherever the panels end and the rest of the plants begin or the terrain begins, just make sure you sink it down enough that you don't have any square edges and you can get a really, really natural look like this. Now that's the build pretty much done, but before we declare it finished, we need to make sure that the climbing actually works. So we're going to head on over to Tecton Zoo and grab a couple of the Siamang from the group that we have over there and move them over here to get the first part of the climbing testing done. So we are going to be looking at the traversable area very intently and making sure that we get these green lines absolutely everywhere. Wow, so we have a gap there. We need to sort that out. So we'll take this vine, we're going to copy it, and then we're going to move it and get a vine as far away as we can from that tree whilst still touching one of the other vines get it in exactly the right position and that should bridge the gap and get the climbing working. So let's find a Siamang, uh, there's one. We will go back to that view and check out the line now. Hit play and we still don't have a solid green line so let's get back to the vine and move it out even further. Can we get it out further? Still touching both the tree and the vine find the Siamang again, switch back to the traversable area view, hit play 
and there we go we have a solid green line all the way around which means the climbing is going to work we're going to buy in some orangutan because i don't have any uh, lying around <laughs> um, and then it is on to the final stage of the build which is perfecting the path we're going to replace the very basic gnarly looking wooden posts with some more impressive indonesian posts from the tropical pack put a bit of detailing on choose a nice color copy these all the way around the path and that is the habitat done let's check it out Considering this is a habitat for an animal I swore I would never use, I'm actually really happy with it. When they do climb up onto the various climbing structures, it looks really cool. And the fact that they can't do the thing that they do that drives you mad makes uh, a really big improvement to the overall experience of the habitat. The Siamang look great. Obviously, they use their climbing a lot more than the orangutan do. And there's a few spots on the ground like this feeder where I'm actually quite happy with the orangs being on the ground. We've only got three Siamang and two orangs in at the moment. Once uh, they've bred and we've got some more, it's going to look even better. Let me know what you think in the comments. I really hope you guys enjoyed this. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't already. Next week, we're going to have an extra video. I've actually built something outside of San Bernardino Zoo for once, which I'm really excited about. That's going to come out on Wednesday. And then next Saturday, we'll be back in San Bernardino Zoo again. Thank you for watching as always, and I'll see you on Wednesday.